This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top questions and things you struggle with most so you can have more energy and less decision fatigue so you can have the energy and vitality you want in this second and better half. And joining me today is Beyonce Probst. She's the founder and CEO of Beatties Solutions, and she helps women reverse their body's aging process with the help of real nutrition, exercise, support, motivation, and accountability. She lives by her motto, train in any mood, lift at any age, and live to tell what happens. Beate walked her talk. She lost 50 pounds and kept it off for over a decade, which she says has helped her develop tools to overcome stubborn weight gain, especially during hormonal changes that she is now passing on to her clients who are each crushing their weight loss journey. In addition to being a holistic weight loss expert and personal online trainer, she's a mindset mentor and empowers women to embark on a journey of self-awareness and self-love, also recognizing that their weight loss is a side effect of an already beautiful woman. Beate shared this with me. This happened to me when I was 50 years old. I was a personal training coaching client, discovering my own potential of maintaining my weight loss success and learning new strategies to overcome hormonal stubborn weight gain. And that is where I realized so few women have the confidence or the drive to do the same. So it was when I started to change my career to be a health, fitness, and nutrition expert after seeing so many women around me feeling helpless and intimidated to start exercising and looking for answers, support, and validation that they're still able to increase their quality of life, even though they're going through all the changes their body is making. Love that statement. And Beate, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you very much for having me. I am so excited. First of all, I want to tell you, Deborah, that I love your work. I, you're passionate and you're so knowledgeable and thank you for having me. That's, I'm very, I'm very privileged. Thank you. Well, we're honored to have you. I love your story. I love that you actually have walked the talk. I think that's so important that, that at some point there was some struggle. So we have, I think both of us, the get you, you know, or the get me strategy and technique. And, and that I think is what a lot of our audience members are looking for. You know, we can spew out facts and read science all day long, but I think it's when there's that also emotional connection and you can relay it and empathize, not sympathize, ladies. Nobody's sympathizing, but we can empathize yeah. with what that's like. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to dive in because you also shared something else with me behind the scenes and you've got a weight loss success story, but it was spawned perhaps by a stinging remark by an ex-husband. That seems like a kind of juicy way to get started. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely not one of my favorite uh, parts of my life, but it was a very important one. It it was like a um, benchmark for me where I realized, um, wow, is that what he would think of me all these years? So we were, you know, we were married a, a long time. We had we raised our family um, in Canada. I immigrated thirty two years ago. You start a new life in a new country. And then you, you, you draw very close through that experience. It's, it forms a bond. At least it did on my, on my part. And, um, yes, we did, uh, end up breaking up. He, uh, uh, decided to leave me. Uh, but then he told me something. It was one sentence. When he told me that, that was a huge, um, eye opener for me. He would say that, who is going to want you with three children? And I thought, my goodness, how could, like, you wanted me? <laughs> you, you, well, I guess I didn't have children then, but that really struck me because, um, I didn't really change who I was. It was just that circumstance in my life, 
um, which was very hard, especially being an immigrant and being uh, in a country with no family support at that time. But I also knew I would, I would eventually get out of that. And, um, and, and I kind of, that kind of prompted me to say, okay, focus is on me now. I need to take care of myself. I need to do something about my health and well-being. And, and that's when it started. I just step by step, literally by just walking every day, I started on my weight loss journey. Very cool. So let's go through your, your obstacles. What did you face? What was in the way for your, you know, you achieving your optimal health where you want to be? What was the biggest thing you had to overcome? Well, you know, the, there is, there is, there is a lot out there and it's like finding that, finding what works for you, for your lifestyle, for your family, for just, and just that, that particular thing that's going to keep you going. And for me, of course, it was very important that this was something for the rest of my life that I wanted to implement. But lots of times what you see are quick fixes and these, it's very challenging to, to keep some of those, those suggestions that are out there, um, for the long term, right? Because everybody's focused on short term. So that was, that was my obstacles. And I also felt like maybe, um, I, I don't know. I felt like, almost a little bit, am I, am I good enough to make those changes? Am I really, um, committed, um, through, you know, you, you still go through the grief of a separation and you still take care of your children. And so lots of emotional things, lots of self-sabotaging, um, things that, that I would do. Um, but then, like I said, then, um, I was done with that. I just had to think about to take this day by day and step by step and come up with a plan. That was, that was my biggest obstacle to what plan am I going to take? Yeah. It's to stick with it. Great. In spite of that significant weight loss, 50 pounds, by the way, yeah, congratulations. I mean, that's no small feat. You rode a hormone roller coaster that knocked you off track. Tell us about that. Yes, I go through, you know, midlife, you go through your hormonal changes, you have your um, symptoms that that come with it and, and they come sometimes gradually, sometimes very suddenly. But with me, I, um, I realized that, um, just my, my cycle would start to be very, very different. It would just come randomly. There would be some bleedings coming randomly and just uh, everything, like everything else seemed to be normally happening. I was, I was fit. I felt healthy. I was eating really well. I was exercising. I was, I was doing well, but I felt my energy was, getting more drained and drained and I, and I, and, and I knew something is going on inside me, but I also uh, experienced those excess amount of, of, of bleedings that are happening, uh, without control. I would, I mean, I would bleed for six months straight without stopping and, um, doctors, you know, sometimes the healthcare system is, is not as par as you wish. So they, you know, they would tr- send you home with this and that and try this and this sometimes they think that they'll tell you it's in your head it's all normal just go you got to go through it you're a woman (laughs) all this all what all that stuff that comes with it and and then yeah and then I ended up in emergency because my hemoglobin was so low that it was dangerous they couldn't operate um because they've they, they found that my 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 uterus was so enlarged I was like I was like uh, seven seven month pregnancy enlargement of the uterus. And so they knew they had to operate, but they had to build up my blood, things like that. So I, I ended up having that done, felt amazing after, but then the menopause hit me like a rock. I was out of it. I, I, overnight I gained the belly fat. I lost, uh, I lost my stamina. I, yeah, it was, it was a very challenging, challenging time because that part happened so quickly and it was so demotivating and, and 
just, yeah, again, being, you know, I, of course I have my uh, circle of friends, but just being with, um, away from family and be and having that, just taking care of these things. It was a, was a big struggle. It was a big challenge at that time. So all of that, really, probably all of that more than if you'd had a smooth ride really lends itself to, okay, I get you. Again, I'm right back to that. How do you think your recent personal journey has influenced your ability to support other women? Well, that's a really good question, Deborah, because I was um, thinking, you know, when I would go, I would force myself to stay active because I knew that's what my body needed. I would just adjust to to different levels and I, I would just take it a little bit easier when I had less energy and, and ramp it up when I have more energy. But I would look at other women, I would see other women in the gym and I would... And I would think to myself, I wonder how they're dealing with their struggles and their challenges and how, what are they doing about it and how are they coping with their silent <laughs> troubles, uh, so to speak. And um, I, I, I felt that desire to help them. I felt that passion. I wanted to talk to them and tell them there is a way out. There is, there is a way out there. We, we, you can do this. You just need the, the, the tools. You just need the, the, the person with you that gets you, like you said, Deborah. Um, that, that, and I, I just had that very strong desire and uh, to, to, to help those women. So I changed my career. I, yeah, I changed my career. I got my, I got certified and now I help women to get their groove back and have their second half of the 100 chronological year mark, you know, have that one full of fire and health and happiness. So I'm, I'm quite passionate about that. I can hear it. Love it. Love the enthusiasm in your voice. And I want to hit on this too, because I think we belly fat weight gain or weight gain period always comes up. And yet I want to make sure, and I need to do this more often. So listeners, you can hold me accountable, but it's not always about weight loss, not for every woman in midlife or beyond. Um, there are those women we don't want to forget who simply have not been able to maintain maybe muscle mass or they're noticing that gravity is shifting the location of a certain parts or weight, but it's not necessarily about weight loss. In fact, many will say, I don't, don't actually have weight to lose. Maybe I could stand to gain some. Are you specifically focused on weight loss or talk about, you know, how you've worked with women who simply have maybe more energy or something else that they really want to focus on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Because it really, really, that was, that was my main motivation, realizing it was not about the weight loss. It was not about the weight. It was about, it was about feeling working with the limitations that we have during that time and even afterwards when once menopause is finished so many times women then realize oh now is the chance uh, now is my time to do something lots of times we feel like it's too late so there is so many aspects of of that um, chronological aging and the biological aging, that feeling young from the inside out, you know, when you, when you haven't seen someone for a long time and they come up to you and tell you, my goodness, you have not aged. I mean, that's the best possible compliment a woman going through menopause or after peri, um, or, or postal menopause can get a compliment like that. And, um, that's what I, that's what I, I love for women to achieve, to have that, that feeling from the inside out that they're feeling awesome, that they have the energy, that they're, that they're sleeping, that their human growth hormone works for them and accepting their limitations day by day. Not every day is the same. Everyone is different. Every day is different. Every situation is different. And I love to show that to them and help them see that they can achieve that. And it doesn't matter what age they are, but there is so much out there for them that they can turn to and 
you know, have those, have those, those tools and, and the people and the support that they need. So if you could look back when you first began, you were changing your life, working on those 50 pounds, you were a coaching client, personal training client yourself. Were you already prior to that? Did you have strength training history? Had you already been an active woman? Where were you? Yeah, I was an active woman. I like my, my, I remember when I, um, I would go to the gym periodically once, maybe every two months or so. And then years would go by and I would think to myself, if I would have just stuck to it, I wonder where I would be now. I wonder how strong I would be now. I wonder how long I can really keep up the my cardiovascular exercise how I, I I always wondered and I did this for years and years and once I started to regularly um, once I started to first of all experience the mass amount of energy that I gained and the muscle mass that I gained and the strength that I gained I realized um I realized that you, you get that drive to keep it up because now for the first time you're really experiencing the benefit. So yes, I, I was, um, regularly active and, and I, and fit and I, I ate, I eat healthy. I, con- I continue to educate myself, especially on yours too, Deborah. I have followed you since many, many years and watch what you're doing and, and, and be inspired by that. Uh, I remember um, when we usually, uh, there was a certain period of time, everybody would go on YouTube before Facebook was really uh, that much, but YouTube was, was, the, was the big thing. And then, and then I would just go and watch and see and be inspired by these people. I never really considered to have a coach on my own uh, just because it wasn't something I first of all, knew about or grew up with or educated myself. But once living in this part of the country, um, it was way more prevalent to have a coach. And that's when I started, like when I went through my chain, my difficult part in during my menopause, I started to work with a coach and I learned even more how to work um, through those challenges and obstacles during that time. And that really got me going. And uh, matter of fact, that cert- that coach actually uh, inspired me and said, you got to do this. You got to work with women. You, you, you have it, you get them, you know what they're going through. So he was a really, really um, amazing inspiration to me. And uh, it just really elevated what I already knew, what I already did, but I ele- it elevated it to a even um, greater, greater uh, purpose and height and outcome. So fantastic. Okay, so let's, let's imagine we have listeners who don't have an exercise or activity history. And I think perhaps that might be at least equally as frustrating, but maybe more intimidating. So I would say for those women who have been active their entire lives and then are suddenly finding what they're doing isn't working, they find themselves very frustrated. For those who felt or or never did, weren't inclined to exercise and now are feeling like this is it. This is, I've got to do this now. I get it. They're intimidated. Yes. What would be your recommendations for someone who's, who's knowing, you know, I do need to start. I, I know I do. I'm listening to these messages now and they're, they're pretty clear that it's not a personal opinion. It's actually really something I need. Mm-hmm. How would you recommend they get started? Yeah, that, that's, I noticed that many, many times when I, um, when I would still would do one on one, um, training with people and I would get that all the time. I cannot step a foot in the gym. I, I'm intimidated. I cannot, I'm afraid I'm looked at. I'm afraid I look stupid. And it was a huge obstacle that, um, that many of my clients had to overcome. And, um, and, and I know I told you a little bit about that, that little dumpy gym I worked in where I first served smoothies. And, um, and then I started working with women in that gym, built that gym really up, pumped it up, 
women love to come to that gym now because they feel uh, they feel like that they deserve there. I would tell them to um, the the one number one thing I always told them is that first of all you have a right. It's you have a right and obligation to yourself. And, and see it from a different perspective first. Don't look at it as in um, why you, what you're trying to achieve going there, because that can be so overwhelming realizing, okay, um, I need to lose 20, 30 pounds. I need to gain strength. I, I can't even walk five minutes on the treadmill before running out of steam. So not looking at it from the, the, the side that, what you're trying to achieve, but looking at it from the side of that is your obligation and it's your right towards yourself. You have the right to claim your space in any area that you are taking care of your life. Might it be in a gym, at a home? I I get the same, I get the same issues from women that I coach now online that they don't want to work out at home in front of their husbands or their partners because they feel silly. They feel, they feel like they don't look good. And again, it's, it's it's about your right, your obligation, your privilege towards yourself, towards your body, towards your mind, towards your towards your whole self to start doing something, even if it's just walking, dancing, move your body. And so of course it's individualized, but that would be looking at it from a from a from a different side take take a step back look at you from from a distance and say okay what is really holding you back from from doing this what are your fears and how we can we overcome those and get you started such great advice so good and you brought something for our listeners you have a quiz Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that yeah, it's a quiz. It's a little bit of an assess- assessment where, um, where someone can find out what their, their biological age is, their true age. So we have your chronological age. That's the birth certificate age. And then we have the, the biological age, how fast we age from the inside. What is our cells? What are our cells doing? Um, um, what is our, um, our, um, um, <laughs> our cells, our human hormone growth, uh, our, our human growth hormone. What is that doing? How is that helping us with the exercise and the diet we're doing? I mean, stress is the number one aging uh, culprit here. It, it nothing else is going to age you faster than stress does. Not enough sleep, of course, and just a proper diet. The 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 getting back to basics. And so that test will test you, but it's not going to just, it's, it's actually very interesting because it's not, not just going to test you in the sense of diet and fitness. It's going to test you in some other areas of life that are determining way, how fast you are aging at what age you are biologically because we all know that lifestyle um, meaning having a support um, system having a certain lifestyle um, in our life like sleep or stress or um, even animals play a huge role in our lives if we have animals or not um, it, takes takes in consideration how fast we age. So it's an interesting assessment and it is researched. So I'm 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 getting a lot of great feedback on that. So everybody can take uh Kate that take that assessment. It's on my um, my website, new dash u dot version slash BIDs, and you'll get the results right away. So very interesting. So good. So thank you for sharing that. And listeners I'm hoping you're walking, you're running, you're lifting, or if you're commuting, we've got you covered. So I have the link to that in the show notes. So you can go there. If you happen to be listening in iTunes, we'd appreciate a rating. And Beate, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Deborah, for having me. And um, keep up the awesome work that you're doing, reaching all these ladies out there that need you. 
Listeners, if you still have a question, please leave it below the show link at flipping50.com forward slash weight loss success. And there is a dash between each of those. I love to hear from you. Love your comments and your questions. And if this episode was helpful, please don't forget the rating in iTunes really helps us and then share it with a friend. Surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey. So to get the most from this week's episode, check out today's show notes again at flipping50.com forward slash weight dash loss success, where you'll find the links and resources that we mentioned today. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.